Water in New Jersey. Once Ty uh, moves out to New York, we're going to be covering this uh, since I would love a cameraman to go there, not far from me. It's a problem that doesn't discriminate. It's been detected all across the state in rural, suburban, and urban areas. And now more than 1.4 million people across the Garden State are getting their drinking water from systems that are dealing with high levels of lead. At least 35 water systems in New Jersey have recently been found to have high lead levels at the tap. New Jersey Advanced Media found after a review of violations issued by the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection between January 1st and January 31st, so excuse me, January 1st, 2018 and January 31st, 2019, the affected water systems vary greatly by size, ranging from major systems that serve hundreds of thousands of people in multiple towns to tiny systems that service just dozens of people in a single business. Here at New Jersey, water systems with lead level violations between January and January 19. Here you got 18.4 parts per billion, population served, 792,713. Wow. Population served, 792,713. Areas served, Alpine, Bergenfield, Bogata, Caristad, Cliffside Park, Cloister, Creskill, Damaris, Dumont, East Rutherford, Edgewater, Emerson, Englewood, Englewood Cliffs, Fairview, Fort Lee, Gutenberg, Hackensack, Harrington Park, Harrisbrook Heights, Har- Has- uh, I can't read the rest of these. We'll put the link in the chat. And this is system name, Suez Water, New Jersey, Hackensack. Lead level of most recent violation, 18.4 parts per billion, 15 parts per billion. 15 parts per billion is the EPA's action level. And by the way, that's not even a health level. 15 parts per billion is a level for corrosion control. It's not a public health level. The CDC says the level of acceptable lead in drinking water, zero, especially for children. Zero for children, but it's zero for everyone, period. Then you have Newark Water Department, lead level of most recent violation, 47.9 parts per billion. Population served, 290,000, 290,139. Area served, Newark. 47.9, significantly bigger than 15, significantly higher than 15 parts per billion. What is being done to deal with the lead? Newark is working on 75 million eight-year project to replace lead service lines. Eight years. City is also installing new corrosion control treatment of the water. Corrosion control treatment for the water if you already have lead leaching out, there's no guarantee that you're going to recoat the pipes. That's the point. For corrosion control treatment, uh, it's to make sure that lead doesn't leach into the water. But there's no 100% guarantee if it's old pipes that are already leaching lead. There's no guarantee that new corrosion control will do the trick. Uh, here's another one. Lead level of most recent violation, 17.1 parts per billion. This is at the Trenton Waterworks, serving 225,000 people. What's being done to deal with the lead? Uh, They're rolling out a 15 million lead service line replacement project, according to a spokesman aimed at replacing lines serving 2,600 homes in the system. New corrosion control and water testing equipment is also being installed. And Bloomfield Water Department, 32 parts per billion was the most recent. The high lead levels are a problem, especially for children. Lead exposure is known to affect behavior and intelligence in developing babies, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. There are no safe lead levels, but the federal drinking water standard for the metal is 15 parts per billion. (coughs) These water systems were issued violations because they had lead levels higher than that standard. Standard. When a water system is found to have high lead levels, a number of steps must be taken to bring the system back into compliance with state regulations according to a spokesperson, New Jersey spokesperson. Those steps include increasing water monitoring and improvements to water treatments in the systems. Han just said it may take several years for a water system to return to compliance. Several years that children and adults might be drinking lead contaminated water. So this is New Jersey. Suez, a private water utility that operates water systems across New Jersey, ended up with a lead problem in the Hackensack system due to problematic corrosion control treatment at at its Holworth water plant. 
By the way, that's what happened in Flint. They weren't using con- corrosion control when they switched to the Flint River, which was known to be a highly polluted water source. They weren't using it at all, which is illegal. By law, water systems have to use water corrosion control. Problematic corrosion control treatment makes it more likely that the water will erode lead pipes and send the toxic metal out of the tap. Residents and businesses in the areas served could be affected if there are lead pipes leading, uh, leading to their properties. Last week, Suez announced, Suez announced that it would spend $15 million this year to replace 50,000 feet of lead pipes in its Hackensack system. Customers served by utility-owned service lines and goosenecks in the Hackensack system can have Suez test their water for free. Well, who's giving these people free bottled water? That's what I want to know. Three other Suez systems, the Vernon Valley and Lake Glenwood, Glenwood systems that serve parts of Vernon Township in Sussex County and the old Milford estates serving system system serving part of West Milford in Passaic County all receive violations for higher lead levels. The Lake Glenwood, Glenwood and old Milford estate systems were both acquired by Suez in December and their lead problems predate the utility's ownership, according to Suez. Quote, these are our first experiences in New Jersey with this issue, the Vassal said, of the lead problems. It's our goal to work aggressively to bring these systems into compliance as quickly as possible. Other large systems that provide drinking water to multiple municipalities made up a major chunk of the affected population. Places like Newark, Trenton, and Bordentown have long-running lead problems, and each is taking steps towards the solution. As I say in Flint, as I say in other places, don't matter if you live in New Jersey, folks. The lead crisis, especially in the water, is everywhere. This ain't me, it's not me fear-mongering. I see it wherever I go. If you just Google lead water, lead and water, if you do it every day, you'll find a new place that there's lead contamination. The media doesn't cover it. The politicians don't really talk about it. I mean, I've heard Bernie Sanders talk about it here and there. I've heard Tulsi Gabbard talk about it here and there. But I don't see anyone treating this as, as an urgent crisis. And, and, and by the way, Cory Booker is a senator from New Jersey. You hear him talking about this? I mean, I just read you multiple water systems in New Jersey that serve hundreds of thousands of people each. So you're talking millions of residents have high lead levels. Why isn't this an emergency? I don't hear anybody talking about this. And whether tides here or not, I'm going to have to go down there myself. I'll just, you know, figure out a way to do it myself and and interview people because this is out of control. And by the way, New Jersey is one of the most expensive places to live in the country. It's got extreme, it's got high property taxes and other taxes. And for that, they're drinking high, they're drinking lead. And This is not to mention, by the way, why is it, you know, they talk like, oh, yeah, we have time. So, you know, eight years, we're working on our plan to replace service lines in eight years. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if there were problematic service lines or pipes underneath, I don't know, uh, in the Clintons town where they live or, or where President Obama lives? or where George W. Bush lives, or where the CEO of ExxonMobil lives, or where, you know, defense contractors live, those pipes would be changed in eight days. But one of these plans to fix it, eight years. This is why status quo exists for stories like this, because this is an emergency. Children, it's not like are potentially drinking lead. They're drinking lead in Newark, Hackensack, and other areas of New Jersey. And by the way, Suez is a private, private water company. And I could do a three-hour live stream on them because they are extremely predatory. Just here, lead and water. Want Suez to replace your home's lead water line? It may cost you $1,000 and higher rates. While Suez 
is set to begin a 15 million project to replace its company-owned lead pipes next week. Beginning in Hackensack, the water company will not touch lead lines on private property, a responsibility that generally falls with homeowners. That could soon change. Suez is seeking state approval to charge customers $1,000 if they allow the company to remove their residential lead lines as part of a two-year pilot program, according to a company filing with the Board of Public Utilities. The $1,000 is considered a discounted price for a project that, if handled by private contractors hired by homeowners, would cost them an estimated $3,000 to $8,000, according to the company. Suez would, make up, Suez would make up the difference in price with a rate hike on all of its customers in its Bergen and Hudson County market. Oh, so you're giving us a discount, but increasing our rates. Okay. Not every customer could afford to do this on their own, so that's why we hope to offer this program, said a Suez spokesperson. We would pass this along to all rate payers because it's an important public health issue. Suez is offering it to anyone in their service area who has a lead service line. But the work has to be done in conjunction with Suez's work in removing their own lead service lines. They are targeting 16 towns this year to do that work. The $1,000 could be paid off in one lump sum or over a year via a customer's utility bill, according to the filing. Well, first of all, one of the problems with this discussion, number one, it's not a sexy discussion, so they're not talking about it on CNN, MSNBC, in the New York Times, or anywhere really. It's not just lead service lines that are the problem. So service lines are, are the lines that come from the curb of your, of your home, where you live, the curb, to, that, to the valve that gets that, to the valve uh, at, you know, in your house. Uh, and then the, you have your interior plumbing that goes to uh, your sink or your sinks. So the service lines, yeah, they could be replacing those, but what if you have corroded corrosion on your interior plumbing? That's the homeowner's responsibility? Why is it the homeowner's responsibility? You didn't go in and corrode those pipes. Are you supposed to change your interior plumbing when most people cannot afford a $400 emergency in this country? Are you supposed to pay thousands of dollars to replace your interior plumbing when most people are living paycheck to paycheck? The Suez talks like $1,000 to replace your uh, uh, service lines is somehow like affordable. That's not affordable for most people who are just barely making it. Can you, if you watching right now, if you got the discount to pay $1,000 to replace your service lines in your home, whether you're in New Jersey or anywhere else, is that something you're gonna be able to jump on right now? Exactly. But this is, this is the problem. Because, by the way, what you're going to see in our documentary, The Flushing Flint, which comes out April 23rd, I'm going to keep repeating it, become a Status Quo member, statusquo.com slash join, to get it before April 23rd and to get it free. Uh, it's going to be free and uh, early release for Flint residents too. What you're going to see is you got state environmental agencies either asleep at the switch or intentionally manipulating the data so they don't have to do anything. So they don't have to change the pipes. So they don't have to uh, do further testing. So they don't have to actually spend money towards keeping their residents safe. You also have the EPA looking the other way, which the EPA is currently looking the other way on what we found. So this is a major crisis in the United Corporations of America. It is a disgrace that it doesn't get more media coverage. When it does get media coverage, it's essentially media outlets like the New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN, MSNBC, just uncritically regurgitating what state agencies and what the EPA tell them. But a lot of these agencies rig the testing to get lower numbers, intentionally endangering children's lives. And but traditionally, this was done more in poorer communities, black, brown, indigenous. But now the problem's coming where you live. If you're white, if you're middle class, unfortunately, pipes, he, pipes don't really have a, a color they prefer. So yeah, in wealthier neighborhoods, there's probably newer homes with fresher uh, infrastructure that's newer. But even in old middle class, still middle class, whatever's left of it, uh, even in middle class uh, homes, some of your homes are, you know, 40, 50 years old. In Flint, there's homes that are 80, 90 years old. That plumbing that the water's coming through, God knows what it's leaching beyond lead. 
And if you follow my Flint reporting, if you follow Aaron Brockovich, if you follow other water experts, it's not just lead. You got bacteria issues, uh, PFAS, which is a cancer-causing chemical uh, that that comes about during the manufacturing of Teflon. You now have uh, problems with chromium, uh, arsenic. I mean, I could go on and on. You also have lead in the ground soil, where uh, in a lot of communities, East Chicago, Flint, and other places. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statusquo.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statusquo.com/slash/join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.